30 second walk from where I landed and a couple of minutes after I'd landed. But the slope is in shadow. So I've got a tiny bit up and on. Not much there, but just a tiny bit of possible catabatic flow. Not enough to matter, but uh, I've seen on bigger sites coming into land like this, as I mentioned about coming down to land next to power lines, I've seen you coming into land, uh, particularly late in the evening, on any slope which is in shadow. So it would be mainly easterly slopes in the evening, westerly slopes if you're doing a morning landing. And you have 8, 10, 15 knots going down the slope at the bottom where it's still sortable for pilots at the top. So you've got to watch for that. Give yourself a lot of leeway. Okay, now another thing which is badly misunderstood by some pilots is voltages. Now a common thing I've heard about those that have a bit of knowledge but not specific is oh the voltages are all the same so it doesn't matter if your glider drapes over. But the reason three wires, three phase. Now three phase isn't used for domestic housing so people aren't familiar with it. Well, you occasionally get it on the very high powered heating systems. Predominantly it's used in industrial premises. And the thing about three phase is that while we could say all be 11,000 volts, and to be honest I'm not too sure about these particular ones, well they could all be 11,000 volts, they're out of phase, they're 120 degrees stepped. Now the easiest way to think about that is that at one point one of those lines on a sine wave will be passing through the zero point, so it will be at zero volts. But the other line will be on a positive part of the phase and the other one on a negative. So from memory I think something like about 14, 18, can't remember the exact bit. It's not 22, it's not the full amount because it's 120 degrees out of phase. But it's something like about 14,000 volts between the most positive and the most negative. Uh, and that is more than enough to burn through a paraglider. So the fact they're all the same voltage isn't relevant because you've also got to count for the phase. So the voltage referred to in O, oh, they're the same voltage, is AC. But their actual voltage compared with ground at any one point is changing on the sine wave. So lots of bits where a little knowledge can be a bit misleading to say the least, if not actually dangerous. In the next field, unlike that one which is in shadow, this one's in sun, and it feels like there's a very gentle upslope breeze. So as the wagon's car's parked down there, uh, it's not the best wing for this, comp wing works quite well on this slope, but uh, DHV1, you're kind of pushing it a bit. But, uh, See if I can get a flight down from here, land at the car park, and then uh, drive on to the next bit. Right, got this wee lump here, and then there's the steeper slope there. Now, one of the key things is how the slope slopes along there, it's actually a bit steeper, but if this has got any east in it, you can be masked by the trees. Here you tend to have to be strides just touching down occasionally, then it drops off. And the key thing is how it is as you approach the road. You want good clearance in case there's any lorries. And fairly clearly you keep a good eye out. It's another problem with flying along by the trees, you really want to be sure you're well clear because you can't see anything coming from Tayport. You want plenty of height, normally go over the road at least 50 feet, but I prefer it when I've got 100, which is almost the height to take off. Pick a bit with the good transitions, good slopes. Uh, so go part way along and a shorter flight distance. Where the trees are there, that's spanning the layby or most of the layby. So clearly, the longer you've got to fly, either the more lift you need or the more efficient your glider. Whereas the closer you can get to that area, the shorter the flight, less fuel if you like, less height you're consuming better chance of getting over and in. So, might be walking back but going along to see what's like nearer the trees here, mainly because of the advantage at the bottom. If not, 
back to the slope there. Now there is also an extra lip, just starts becoming visible. Actually quite a nice drop off there, but it does not work if there's any east. You've got to have the wind coming straight up or with a touch of west. When the touch of west you actually get lift off the line at the side of the trees and I've seen me get above them, but only once or twice when flying here. Right. So got a nice drop off there. Good area here, plenty of clearance for the power lines. And uh, air's feeling fine at the moment. Albeit when you're walking, you get a distortion in the feeling of the wind strength and direction. Yep. And about probably a knot. Yeah, probably about one knot there. Just enough to make an easy enough takeoff. And no need for a rucksack. Harness does a very good job of that. That's one of the advantages of these straps. Tuck in, just hold it very nicely in place. Right, yeah. recheck the airspace. And the gentle. Slow, slow, slow. Stepping up slope very slightly. Recheck and bounce. Up it slides, going up slope, turning around slowly. Tiptoe, waiting, gliders hanging back a wee bit, and that's it nodding forwards. Long gentle strides, no push. Keep the feet ready. There we go. Doesn't feel like it's going to clear, but it might. down into a stall, touching down, ease off, slow turn, turning in the harness, warping control and settling gently, 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 and you see a wee bit backdraft. <laughs> 